about 11 million adults in the UK who have disabilities. Uh, there's also a lot of older people uh, who may not consider themselves disabled, um, but maybe have difficulty with their sight, they're maybe not hearing as well as they used to. Um, so all of those people are people who could really benefit from the sorts of uh, considerations that we take when it comes to accessibility. What do they need? How do we create a product that will work for them as well as everyone else? Tim Berners-Lee, who is the inventor of World Wide Web, he once said that the power of the web is in its universality. And I would argue if the website is not accessible and usable by disabled and older people, uh, frankly, we're denying this very basic right to millions of people in the 21st century. When creating an accessible website, I will try and put myself into the mind of different user groups, but I realise at the same time that I'm not accessing the web exactly how they will be. It's very important that websites are tested so that all different user groups can access it. Um, it's important, obviously, because there's the social issue of excluding people and the frustration they feel, but there are business cases as well. So, for example, there's the spending power of disabled people. One in two people will be disabled at some point in their lifetime. So there's an awful lot of money there, and it's often disabled people who do shopping online a lot because they can't physically get out to the stores. So, in a way, it's more important to include them. Now, I notice that the website does have an accessibility page, which I will just click on, and it takes me to a list of all the features of the accessibility on this website. And that's really helpful. It tells you straight away how to change to a different colour and background. Well, the great thing about testing is that if you do it with your audience, um, you really know whether your product works or not. And, you know, from our viewpoint, if the product doesn't work for the audience, the product doesn't work. When I hover over the accessibility tab, it says it opens in a new window. Now, it's opened in a new window, all right, and I've changed the background for here. But going back to the original page, <laughs> it's still the blue on white. So it hasn't worked like you'd expect it to do. And now, if I had a visual impairment, I might be confused, or I might find that very difficult or unintuitive. So you've put some real people uh, into a lab uh, with the designers, and you say to, to those people, OK, this is the point of this product. Can you use it? Can you do that thing that you would come to the product to do? Uh, and if they can use it, great. And if not, you've still got some more work to do. Windows app, desktop, folder, view list, ship tab, system tray, new updates are available button. I think standards are important for everyone. First of all, they give clear framework for web developers in any of these organizations to work with. And secondly, from a user experience, if the website is developed to good accessibility and usability standards, it's a win-win for everyone. Standards are incredibly important. Firstly, because uh, not everybody is an expert in this area. So our standard tries to say, OK, if you own a website, um, then these are all of the things that you need to think about. Because if you make the choice in this particular direction, then the world opens up for people. If you make it in this direction, well, maybe you're excluding a certain number of people. Standards are very important and useful to web designers to help them be able to make sure they've got all the bases covered. So they might be able to understand how a blind person would access a website, but they might forget about a deaf person and have a video running that the deaf person can't hear. So it's very important in providing website designers with a checklist, if you like, and to make sure that everything is, is considered and so nobody's excluded in that way. British Standard BS8878 uh, will be coming out later in the year, in December. And a lot of people who have come together who are real experts in this area, together with a lot of people who represent people with disabilities, who can tell us what people really need. So we've come together to try and set down a process for what organisations should do if they're trying to make their websites accessible. I've never come across any web developer who say, I don't want to embed accessibility into my website. I think the key issue is do they actually know what they're talking about? So with the very best of intentions, if it is that, that has not been a part of their uh, education in terms of what accessibility standards are, what usability is all about. Standards will help to make sure that 
the right things are included and to remind them that it's got to be tested in the right way so the end user can have the confidence of knowing that the website is going to be there for them and they'll be able to use it.